One of the great challenges that the current economic system faces, in my opinion, is a challenge that humanity has never, ever had to face before. Indeed, we have dealt with famine and disease. We have fought wars as a global community. But many of those famines and disease and wars exist in regional areas, in localized areas, outbreaks of disease. And today, with a population that just three weeks ago surpassed seven billion people, it's a staggering number when you think about it, and it's an staggering acceleration of population on this planet. We have never, ever had to deal with this challenge before. Ladies and gentlemen, in 1900, 111 years ago, there were 1.6 billion people on this planet. 1.6 billion. 12 years ago, there were 6 billion. Today, there are 7. And by the middle of this century, there are anywhere from 9 to 9.5 billion people. And much of our economic models are based on consumption. Endless, increasing consumption. Consumption of plastic, consumption of oil, consumption of more and more food, more and more energy, more and more water. Endless consumption. It concerns me greatly when we sit down in the economic times and all I hear about is the need to return to growth and consumption. That that is what our economic models are based on. Because there's not enough stuff in the world to continue consuming the way we do. When you consider that already in a report from the World Wildlife Fund this year, humanity consumes one and a half times the resources that the planet can sustain and restore every year. That is like a farmer eating his seed before he's even planted it. We are farmers eating the seed that we need to sustain ourselves. And when you also add to that the fact that 1.2 billion people, a fraction of the total, consume 60% of those resources. And you consider that the BRIC countries alone, Brazil, Russia, India, and China, the vaunted four, are an additional 2.8 billion people, let alone all the other countries from Africa and the rest of Southeast Asia, Latin America, and the potential that this beautiful continent has to grow rapidly over the coming decades, there is a serious problem. The status quo will change one way or another. And I would propose that it is up to us to change it on our terms, not for it to change by course of nature. And the cooperatives have an opportunity because of the values that you carry, because of the fact that you are rooted in communities, not a distant executive committee, a continent away that cares nothing for that community, cares nothing perhaps for pollution or destruction of resources in order to meet a quarterly profit projection, but instead being rooted in communities. By your very nature, you care about communities and the values of sustainability in the environment that are required to be considered a cooperative are the very values that we must embrace if we are merely to continue to feed the world's population, to continue to provide water and shelter and to grow. Imagine that we have to increase food supply 50 to 70 percent just to feed the next two billion people. How do we do that? These are challenges that must be answered in a new way, or in this case, in an old way, and an old way that must be rediscovered.